Chapter 24, Part 2, Robotic Surgery. The Objectives. Robotics first came into being in 1989 when a high-tech medical device company called Computer Motion was formed. In 1992, RoboDoc was made for orthopedic hip replacements in Europe and is still in use today but not in the U.S. because it has not been approved by the FDA. In 1997, Da Vinci was introduced, and later that same year, the first telesurgery was performed using the Da Vinci system. The same year, the robot called Seuss was also introduced by a competing company. From about 1998 until March 2000, the Seuss and Da Vinci systems made huge advances. From about 1998 until March of 2000, the Seuss and Da Vinci systems made huge advances in robotic surgery literally leapfrogging each other in new technology and FDA approvals. In March of 2000, the two companies merged becoming Intuitive Surgical and all their techno technological resources were put into making the Da Vinci the best robot on the market. Norfolk General is a huge user of the Da Vinci system. The surgical robot system movements closely resemble the actions of, human, of the human body, allowing the arm to move up, down, side to side, and back and forth. Some of the advantages of having robotic surgery is that the images are three-dimensional. It reduces hand tremor and it promotes faster recovery because less tissue is traumatized. Some disadvantages are, is that it is expensive and some insurances still do not cover it. All members of the surgical team must receive special training. Training for the Da Vinci system is available from the manufacturer lab manufacturer at various locations. The surgical technolo technologists should have access to both on-site and off-site learning opportunities. Continuing education is critical as the technology is modified and refined. In robotic assistant surgery, the surgeon is not scrubbed but sits at a console and manipulates the instruments. The console is placed outside the sterile field but close enough for effective communication between the surgeon and the other team members. The robotic surgery equipment should be positioned in the manner that it protects the field from contamination. The operative setup must be pre-planned so that anesthesia time is not used for tasks that should have been done before surgery. The surgeon performs sterile techniques to place the trocars. He, he or she then breaks scrub to operate from the surgeon's console. The surgeon returns to the sterile field after scrubbing and regowning and gloving near the close of the the close of the procedure to remove the trocars and the close incisions. The surgeon directs the flow of the procedure and is responsible for coordinating the activities of everyone on the team. The surgical system performs other tasks at the sterile field. These include exchanging instruments on the sterile robotic arms and managing any instruments that are outside the control of the robotic system. For example, in gynecological surgery, the first or second assistant controls the uterine manipulator. The assistant works closely with the scrub to maintain a clean and safe operative field. Instrument exchanges and management of the sterile robotic components are the dual responsibility of the surgical assistant and the scrub. The scrub maintains the robotic instruments during surgery and assists or directs the draping procedure. After all the cannulas have been placed, the scrub may direct positioning of the patient cart. The scrub is familiar with the operation of all electronic and vision components, assisting in the registration and black and white balance. He, he or she may also operate the clutch arms and at the close of surgery help retract all the instruments. The circular directs all the scrub and non-sterile staff during surgery. Any questions?